Hello! Today we're going to be making some superhero capes. Um, I did a video about a year ago when my daughter turned five. We had done mermaid tales uh, for her birthday party. Um, her birthday party this year is superhero themed and so we're going to be making some um, some superhero capes. So again, we're making. I'm making eight of them. I'm going to show you one of them. I've made about... I think I've made four of them so far, so I've got four to go. Um, and what I've done is instead of making them all the same, uh, like I did last year with the Mermaid Tales, this year I'm making them in different colored fabrics. So the one you're going to see today is a pink one. Um, and I have to tell you now, because I know the questions will come in the comments, I'm wearing gloves. Uh, I uh, injured my finger and the palm of my hand, and um, in order to wash my hands as often as I need to today, especially because I am doing a lot of cooking and baking in between the times that I'm working on this um, this cape. Uh, I'm wearing the gloves so that I can uh, wash my hands appropriately and not uh, end up with um, uh, having to replace the bandages too often uh, on my, uh, the, my wounds that I have on my hands. So, uh, without further ado, let's start making these capes. So what you'll see is I have uh, obviously just a very plain piece of fabric, um, and uh, what I'm, uh, what I've, the way I've measured it, is I bought about a meter uh, of each color of fabric, four different colors of fabric, and um, I'm using uh, a, a, I guess a half meter of uh, of each. Um, color for each cape. Now I'm sort of turning the fabric depending, some of them are wider, some of them are narrower, so I'm just basically looking at what works. So in this case I have uh, this particular piece of fabric which is half the uh, half the width of what I, um, I purchased, whoops, is uh, right now I've got about 32 inches across and I know it's not the best way of measuring but my table is small uh, and about 34 inches uh, down so uh, for my Canadian friends uh, so my 32 inches is about 81 centimeters and my 34 inches is about 86 centimeters. So it's, it's practically a square piece and as a matter of fact, once I'm done with it, it is going to be um, pretty much square because of what we're going to do. So now every piece of fabric has a, a, um, a good side and a bad side. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn it so the bad side is up. First thing we're going to do is we're going to fold up. Not sure how much I'm folding up here. I'm basically folding up about one inch, two and a half centimeters, and I'm going to take my pins. I'm going to fold it up, and I'm going to pin it into place. So now that I have it folded up about an inch and pinned, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my glue gun and I'm going to just glue a bunch of dots. This is going to leave, likely because it has on some of the other fabrics, it's going to leave a mark on the um, on on the fabric. So you want to make sure that when you're when you're doing your um, your your glue gun uh, mark or glue gun glue gunning, if you will, that you're um, putting even even marks so that when someone's looking at it as a whole, they may see polka dots uh, and not quite be quite sure what they are, but not see a big mess full of glue. So you want to make sure that you've got dots that are as even as possible. You start a row of dots that are as even as possible, and you stop at or near where the next pin is. And then you just push it down, make sure that it's well sealed, and you'll see the glue coming through here. You can see a little bit, I don't know if you can see it on the webcam, but 
um, the glue gets a little bit, uh, you can see it a little bit darker. It's not going to stay dark like that, it's going to lighten up a little bit, but certainly you do see it a bit, so just be careful and make sure that you've got a pattern that uh, is reasonably uh, organized and stable. All right, so now I've taken out the next two pins. I'm just going to open kind of like a little pocket here, and I'm going to keep going from the last place I had a dot. I'm keep going with my single dots. Until close to where I have my next pin. And then stretch out the fabric. That's how I seal it, is just by stretching it out a little bit, and then I know that everything is in the right place. Press it down. We don't even need to take the pins out because I've got the pins high enough that I could just pop this up. Let's try that. You can see how I do that. We're at the end of the line because we're at the end of the glue stick. Take this pins out before the glue gets too close to them and they stay stuck in there. All right. So now we have the bottom of our cape done. All right. I'm going to turn this around. Now, what I've got, I've got these pieces of plastic, vinyl, I guess I shouldn't say plastic, and uh, my original idea was that I was going to use these as the collar that would go inside the cape. I was going to put a Velcro here. I may still do that, but um, at this point I think I've decided I'm just going to put a ribbon through the top instead. However, I could still use the size of this, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as a guide to head down and pin. So I've got about half an inch down there. So uh, half an inch, about uh, one to one and a half, I'd say probably one and a half, a uh, little bit more than one and a half centimeters. So I guess it's a bit more than half an inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pin all the way down I'm going to use this as a guide, and I can feel it. You may not be able to see it, but I can feel it under my fingers, and so as long as I just keep the same, now, a lot more uh, perfect, of course, you can measure it all the way down. I'm not going to measure it because uh, I think I may have mentioned once or twice. These do not need to be perfect right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the pins in, as I did at the... The, um, the bottom, and I'm just going to glue the very end here. And that's going to give me plenty of space to then put my ribbon in. So peel it back. And this is going to be near the top of the child's, well, right at the top of the child's cape. So, I've said it before, but basically just try to keep it as neat and consistent as possible because this is where it's more likely to be seen. Now, depending on the fabric you use, some fabrics you don't see the uh, you don't see the glue through, especially once it dries. However. Uh, I'm using mostly silk and taffeta, and uh, I'm not going to lie, they, uh, they certainly do show the glue. I just need to take my pins out. So all we're going to need to do is put a ribbon through this top part. So you can see here, you can kind of see 
You can see the dots, and that's why it's so important to have them as even and consistent as possible. So now we're going to turn this back around to the bottom. So all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to lay these pom-poms down. Now I'm not going to be stretching them out when I actually affix them. So I want to make sure that I'm not stretching them out here because if I stretch them out, I am going to be short. And I don't want that. I usually put an extra pom-pom in there. And then I typically end up cutting it off. But um, at least it's uh, easier if you've got one too many than one missing at the end because it looks kind of weird. So this is a fairly easy part of this. What you'll do is you'll start the same way as you did with the rest, except you don't need pins for this. You're just going to make dots all the way down and you're going to lay the pom-pom flat. Now you're going to want to have your dots as low as possible on your line. So I'm not going to do them up here where, um, where the, uh, the, 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 the bottom has been folded up. I'm going to do them as close to the bottom as possible because I really want them to hang. I want them to hang down. I don't want them to be up here where you can barely see them. Remember, we're working on the uh, the wrong side of the, uh, the cape right now. So. Now, you really have to pace yourself when you're doing this. You just do a little strip and then put the pom-poms down. And give yourself a little break because if you don't get to the end, your glue is dry. Pom-poms. to the end. And you see, I have, I'm able to cut my last pom-pom here. Cut that right off. Whoop. Right, so now we've got our pom-poms at the bottom. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like on the bottom. hanging down. Okay, next we're going to be making these crests. Now this crest is uh, going to be attached to the capes and what I've done is I've taken a spare piece of fabric, just a gray piece, and then I've used some of this. Now I am not a seamstress uh, and therefore, I don't know what this is called, but it's basically what you use to do the, um, the edging on, on uh, some projects. And what it is, is it's a piece of fabric that's folded in and in. So we're going to be using this on the outside of our crest. And then for the letter, and what we're doing is we're going to have one of these for each of the children who are coming to the party with their initial and then there's going to be velcro on the back and the velcro is going to attach to the cape that they choose so uh there's going to be one with uh, the initial for each child this one is for lauren what i've got is these they're cardboard letters they've got this sort of foil finish they're just the right size for this so this is what we're making right now First thing you're going to do is you're going to decide on your, your crest uh, and then you're going to draw it on a piece of paper and cut it out. So this is basically, it's your pattern. And then I'm going to put my, now this is just an extra piece of fabric I had. It's not even square, it's just like a little piece somewhere that I had. Um, so I'm going to put my pattern on and I'm going to pin it. pinning it is because then we're going to cut it. If you can feel that you can cut something out without having a pattern pinned on, feel free. I know I tried it earlier and I wasn't able to, so. Alright, so now we're just going to cut And again, this does not need to be perfect. 
Uh, more particularly, the edges don't need to be pretty at all because you're going to be covering them up anyway. All right, so I've got my crest. Now I'm going to take my pins out. Et voila. So I know that I have a longer edge here, uh, or actually I guess it's a shorter edge and then I've got some longer ones coming down, so I want to make sure that I'm doing this right. So I'm going to open this up. Put this right down on it. And line it up to the corner right here. Line that corner up. And see, it's so much easier when I didn't have gloves on. But, and then, so it looks like I'm going to need about up to here. So I can cut it now. I can trim it a little bit more later as well. But if I trim it now, then that's going to give me less to work with, which is good. All right. We're going to dot this the same way as we did with the other part of the project. Dot, 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 dot. Ooh, my glue stick's falling out. And then we're going to take this and we're just going to put it right down on this. I'm going to put it as close as possible to the middle. But it's not going to show if it's not in the middle. So, you know. Um, and then you're going to do the same thing. I'm going to dot again. So dot on the main fabric. And this one doesn't really leave marks because the fabric is a double fabric. It's big enough, so. So there's your first, first one. Now. I do then is I cut along the same angle as is my base. Have I mentioned that this doesn't need to be perfect? I think so. Once or twice. All right. Next, I'm going to do the same doggone thing. This one we're going to make for some more letters. Julia. How about J for Julia? So, super simple. So there you go. 